Hey there, welcome to this video. I am Dr. Baba Ojo, and in this video, let's talk about something fun about research proposals. Now you might have the opportunity to interview with a professor who wants you to talk about a proposed um, idea that you can bring to his lab. Now all you have to do is to read or understand what the professor does in his lab and maybe try to come up with an idea. It might not be the best idea, but at least it shows that you can think and you are ready to be part of that research group. So that is what I'm going to be talking about in this video, how to present a research proposal. Just as a reminder, in my last video, I talked about how to present your past research project if you happen to be in an interview with a professor or a grad admissions committee in the United States. So if you've not seen that video, please click the card that is displaying on the screen right now. So let's get back to how to present a research idea. Now, just like we did for your past research experience, you want to talk about the background or the gap in current literature about your proposed um, idea. So what are we missing right now that you intend to feel or to do with your proposed research? Again, when you're talking about this problem that we have right now that uh, you need to address or we need to address, you should try to put it in quantifiable terms. Okay, like 50% of people are suffering from this or 70% of people are, are occupied with this. So you 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 want to, uh, because that gives us an idea of the, you know, the gravity of the problem. Then end this uh, particular background session with um, your specific research questions or the aim of the study. Your aim can be one or two, but most of the time you, you don't want to have a lot of aims. Because if you have done this a lot, you know that having a lot of aims sure probably show that you don't know what it takes to do some of these things. So one or two aims, at least for a start, is good uh, for you. Then after discussing the background, you've told us the problem and your specific research questions or research aims. You talk about the methods that you hope to use to answer this research question. Okay, key methods again. Uh, you, it, I mean, as a PhD student or a PhD applicant, you probably are not expected to be experts at everything, but you should be able to at least have an idea of you know what you could probably do to you know address some of these questions if you are asked to talk about a proposal. So read up on methods that you can use to answer these questions. And like I said, you are not expected to be experts, but at least you should be able to say one or two sentences about you know, your proposed method. Now, contrary to most um, ideas out there, when we, we are talking about proposal in the United States, um, you just don't talk about the background or method section only, but you need to be able to tell us your expected results. We know you've not done the research and you, we know you probably don't know um, half of what you are talking about, but at least you have some foresight into what you expect. And this will be informed from um, your literature review. If you've done a lot of research on the proposed subject, you should at least be able to guess. We don't use guess, but we use hypothesize. So what would be your hypothesis? What would be your guess or your expected results? If we use these methods to answer the proposed um, research questions. So again, you should be able to tell us what we should expect from your proposal. And lastly, after talking about expected results, you should be able to self-critique yourself, you know, this is at a very high level now when we talk about proposals. Um, there's another section that we call um, pitfalls of the research. So 
that that means what are the expected problems that you might have so you've it shows that you've thought about this a lot you know we can do this but these are potential problems that could arise during the process and um, a good scientist would immediately follow that up with potential solutions or methods that we can use to you know go around that problem or solve that problem but it shows that you understand that this may you know may or may not work or may be challenging and this is what we probably can do to maybe address that or as an alternative to this we can do this we can do that so you should be able to suggest those things um and self self critique yourself importantly so to recap for past research experiences you want to talk about the background the method key methods that you're going to use your results one or two key results implication of the research or what we call the significance of the research and uh, talk about future studies if you think your research is probably not the last thing that should be done on the subject forever so you should be talk you'll be able to talk about future studies and um, if you are talking about a research proposal four things also will come into play your background background of the research of, of the problem and also the key methodology and your expected results which is the th third um, thing you need to talk about for proposals and lastly um, potential problems that could arise and how you intend to solve them which we call um, I call the pitfall potential pitfalls of the research now this my friends is how you can talk about your research at a very high level um, and even current students or um, PhD graduates still use these methods to talk about their research when they go to conferences or at any networking sec se um, section so this is like the standard way uh, that we talk about research and again this may differ a little bit based on your field but this that I've presented here today is the general concept behind uh, discussing or presenting research hey my friend I hope you enjoyed the video if you did kindly subscribe to the channel as I will be bringing a lot more uh, important information to you on this channel and also don't forget to like and um, share with your friends who might benefit from it don't forget that you can ask questions in the comment section and i will be sure to answer that as soon as i see it and also you can follow me on my personal social media pages and most importantly you should follow me on the best man academy instagram and facebook pages where i give out a lot of spontaneous tips thank you for listening and i'll see you in the next video Thank you.